Hey everyone, I'm back again today. Um, so I said in my last video that I released that I was going to be releasing another one in an undisclosed time in the future. And at the time, I kind of had the vague plan in my head that I would release one tomorrow. Um, but I wasn't going to make any commitments. You know, like I said, I'm trying to keep this unformatted, kind of raw, um, and un unstructured to some extent. So, you know, today I was watching Philly D and he he talked about a story where there was seemingly this, this surge of concern on social media about how Facebook was listening in on people's conversations and then using what people were saying to serve ads to them. Um, and, and this is a really relatable experience to me. I'm sure many of you out there have the same. Otherwise, it wouldn't be surging on social media. Uh, where I've, I've talked about something and, you know, soon after I talk about it, I see an ad for that same kind of product. And I hadn't really been searching for it online or, or anything. Uh, the other really weird one that I see that, that's, you know, a lot more understandable or um, doesn't require extra equipment, just the data that you know, a lot of social media platforms collect anyway, is my wife will search for something and then I'll see ads for it, uh, which is its own kind of interesting phenomena. I, I'm, I'm just waiting for the person who sues them because they're looking for something that would get them in trouble, either like a wedding ring for a fiancé, but maybe they were going to marry someone else or, or you know, they were on... Uh, one of these websites for having an affair, but then it gets served to the spouse and, and gets them in trouble. I don't know. Just, just I'm waiting for data seepage of that kind to uh, to get someone in trouble. But that's not the the one I'm here to talk about. the The main one I'm here to talk about is the idea of Facebook, YouTube, Google, whoever the 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 big baddie is in your head, um, listening in on the microphone on your computer, your, your phone, uh, whatever your devices are, and then taking that information and using it uh, either to serve you ads or maybe for, for a much more nefarious purpose of some kind, even your government doing it. Um, and the, the conversation that's being had right now is, is this happening? And if it is happening, you know, uh, what kind of legislation should we you know, instill to make sure it doesn't happen. And I think that question is flawed from its very premise. One, um, it doesn't matter if they're doing it or not. The technology is out there. If it's not happening, it's not happening by sheer choice. Um, and it's only going to take the, the right or maybe the word is wrong person getting a hold of it for it to happen. So this idea that, um, you know, we, we could find the right people not to do it is, is flawed because the technology is only going to become more available. I mean, uh, you know, even, even the most inaccessible technology, putting a man on the moon uh, eventually becomes accessible to... Uh, more people look at SpaceX, and I think I think I read a thing recently. There's like 23 companies that have spacefaring technology. I know Virgin's getting in there. I, don't quote that number. Just I'm going off the top of my head here. But regardless, we know there's at least a couple. Uh, so this 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 technology that allows people to listen in, and then extract from that not just audio. Extracting audio is one thing. I mean. It, if you have 24 hours worth of life, it takes someone else 24 hours worth of life to process that information and get some usable out of, out of it. So it, there's a really high cost involved there. That's not even the scary part. The scary part is when they can take your audio, process that audio, and extract data from that. They can have, have a computer listen to you, and that computer spits out, this guy likes liquors you know, um, gumdrops or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Jelly bellies. This guy likes liquors, jelly bellies, and then use that as maybe some tactic to, uh, to do social engineering or, or maybe that they, they know more sensitive data like your, 
finances or mortgage or whatever. Um, so from that perspective, I, I think it's a really flawed question to ask, what if, and just say, it will, you know, it either is or it will happen. Um, and, and, you know, that kind of brings me to the second part of what I think is so flawed about the discussion right now is they're trying to seek legislative fixes for this. And I don't think a legislative fix exists, can exist. It's not even like we hadn't found the right answer. I think, I don't think there is the possibility of a legislative fix just because of the way technology grows. <clears throat> for instance, we, we can ask ourselves questions like, has there ever been a, a, a legislative fix to robbery or murder or, or, you know, some of the more basic ones that are easy to talk about? Um, and I think the answer is definitively no. What, what we have found is legislative hurdles, uh, things that are deterrents to an activity, but they're not a fix. And, and they don't prevent the technology from existing, and they don't prevent the thing from happening. Even when you talk about very uh, large-scale things, very intricate things like terrorist attacks or, or uh, IEDs, uh, getting your hands on, on advanced weaponry, e even to the point of, of nuclear devices, uh, the biggest deterrent to nuclear devices, as we've seen, has not been uh, government-issued policies. It, it's been the difficulty in refining uranium to the point that it's usable and then some uh, difficulties in actually producing the hardware and the casing and all the other stuff that goes into that. But it definitely hadn't been because we made a law and then that law just prevented that from happening. Uh, so, what is the solution? And I have a proposal. I have an idea. I have a thought. This problem is so new that I don't think anyone can definitively say like, boom, here's a solution. Um, but I think we can, you know, throw some good ideas out there and, and, and kind of see what the future holds for it. So here's my solution. Make the information useless. Live so openly and so freely that the information was readily accessible anyways. That people knowing that you like licorice jelly bellies or that you have a mortgage or whatever is going on in your life, uh, isn't really an astonishing thing, isn't even really a useful thing. It's, it's nothing they can bribe you with. It's, it's it, you know, they, they may know your schedule and it may help them a little bit with, with, you know, robbing you, but if you just kind of assume people know that anyway, uh, preventing a robbery or any of these kind of things becomes a much less difficult task because you're no longer relying on your own privacy and secrecy as a hurdle to people getting in. Assume they've crossed that hurdle and install an alarm system or, you know, open carry. Well, maybe not even open carry, just, just arm yourself. Um, uh, or, you know, look, look into making sure you're in secure places. You know, you're, you're not meeting people in secluded areas or whatever it is. <clears throat> just assume that this already exists and is a thing. <clears throat> and live your life in such a way that it's not a problem. Now, a lot of people have made an argument very similar to this that I think invokes ethical concerns that, one, I think they're wrong about, and two, um, even if they are right about them, as right as you can be about an ethical question, we, we, we can't really find universal agreement across cultures on. So my, my conclusion is going to come to the same as theirs, but with, with much different reasoning. And, and the argument that we hear all the time from people that's going to sound similar to this is, if you have nothing to hide, it's not a problem. And I think that's wrong. I think that, uh, and, and we've explored this in, in many literary pieces, as a people, you know, you can look at, at Orwell's work and, and the design of prisons. Having been a prison guard in the past, I can kind of attest to the way they, they design things so you're always watched or at least don't know if you're watched and how that affects behavior. Um, even silence is dissidence. 
within populations and why that's a problem. So I completely disagree with the notion that it is not a problem to be watched if you have nothing to hide. And then we can even get into really deep questions about what does it mean to have something to hide, right? I mean, if you're if you have information that the government's doing something wrong, is that or isn't that something to hide? Someone's saying, well, no, don't hide that. Show it to the world. Because, you know, it's, 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 you're not doing anything wrong, and, and therefore it's not something to hide. But one could then argue on top of that that while it's nothing you're doing wrong, it, it may pose a danger to you. I mean, get off the government page. Let's look at at the people who, who were standing up to witness against the mob during the height of, of their crime, you can then look at, at them and say, did they have something to hide? And, and while they weren't doing something wrong, they did have something to hide. And the same technology can be used by both corporations and individuals. Uh, never mistake that this, this is only a corporate power we're talking about or a government power. It's it, it's it's a power and it, it will grow and be obtained. That said, um, so so you know that that's kind of the 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 discussion I like to see and, and the, the place I like to to see us think about is, you know, do we give more power to those who would use our information for nefarious or or maybe even means outside of our permission? when we live such secretive and secluded lives and maybe we just need to learn a new level of openness and I think with that comes a new level of tolerance for openness around us in order to combat this. Now I think there's a line, a level, a place where we need to draw hard lines and then in very small areas of our lives we need to take and live a very secretive life, a, a, a secretive life like, you know, maybe people aren't even used to living now. And this stuff is like our checking account numbers, our passwords, our, uh, um, if you're into cryptocurrency, your keys, any of that kind of stuff where it's, it becomes very obvious how giving it to a, you know your social security number giving it to a large amount of people would clearly do you harm because the harm in them having it isn't from it being secretive so much as it gives them a unfettered access to either you or your information or your your assets or maybe even your house you know like the security code on your security system I think we need to be especially secretive about that very small bit of information in our lives. And when we only f have to focus on being secretive about that, it makes protecting yourself a lot easier. Um, you know, if you really look at the people who have to lose from information, it's people who have reason, maybe even good reason, to hide information. We're talking about celebrities who don't want people knowing their, their, you know, address because large groups of people will just follow them and be weird. Uh, we're talking about politicians who, who can lose their office if they um, pretend they're normal people with normal lives and flaws like everyone else. Those people are who we really see hit hard from hey. big data leaks. Hey, you want to be on YouTube? No. I no? have to take Jenna to Scouts. Okay. Love you, bye. Bye. I started the race. Okay. Um, but those people are the kinds of people that we that really stand to lose the, the biggest from these these kinds of data breaches and breaches in their life. So uh, don't be like those people. Don't give give an out for your own information and live openly because the time is coming when this will be our reality. This, this um, trade of convenience for security. And if, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, even, even me, you know, I, I look at this and I, I know it's coming, yet, yet here I am on YouTube, I have a smartphone I'm recording this with, I, I'm on Facebook, I'm on, the, I'm on 
Google. I'm on the very platforms that we're talking about here. And why? Because it makes my life so easy. Uh, I don't have to, to worry about that. It's even changed our arguments. You know, whenever I'm sitting around with friends and we're arguing about something, we don't sit there and just yell at each other anymore. We just we look it up. And then we, we get to have arguments over what good data is and uh, when a study is valid. But, um, so I don't think it's really a, a useful solution to say, well, just don't use technology anymore. Um, because technology is, is, is winning this battle uh, without even much of a fight. And, and I don't see that changing without some kind of extreme, you know, disaster or change or, or wipe out. Or, uh, yeah, even if that happened, that, it, that knowledge would still be there. I, I just don't see how that could change. So we need to, to, to learn to live with it in a cooperative manner. And, and part of that means... Um, not not kicking and screaming at it and giving it this weaponized information uh, to use against us because that is going to create a, a much more um, conflict, uh, conflict-oriented situation that will give it power over you eventually. So anyway, that's what my big spiel is today about my random thought that I wanted to regurgitate onto the internet. If you have any thoughts about that, let me know. Tell me why I'm completely wrong and we need to, to fight this tooth and nail or why the government can solve this problem or um, maybe why I'm right. Who knows? All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, I didn't press stop.